Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, EAA membership grows past 200,000, military hours for right seat airline job may be lowered, applications for UAV pilot exceeds FAA expectations. I'm Brie Cross, it's September 27, 2016, and this is Airborne Limited. EAA has reached a major milestone as the association has surpassed 200,000 members. It appears that more and more pilots are finding EAA represents their kind of flying more than ever before. Jack Pelton, EAA CEO and chairman of the board, said in part, quote, We reached this milestone by building on the legacy established by our founder, Paul Poborezny, more than 60 years ago when he stated that all who wish to participate are welcome. Pelton added that EAA's value and growth are especially notable as a counter to a decreasing number of active pilots in the U.S. Fewer than 600,000 active pilot certificates are now held by U.S. residents, a number that EAA and its members have sought to reverse with programs that meet the organization's mission, which focuses on growing participation in aviation by sharing the spirit of aviation. Pelton summed it up by saying, quote, Our organization is also dedicated to getting it done, breaking down barriers that keep people from pursuing their own dreams, and encouraging innovation to take us over the next horizon of flight. Some military pilots with as few as 500 hours flying time could be eligible for a right seat spot at an airline, according to sources familiar with guidelines being discussed by an FAA advisory committee. Under the rules that were put into place in 2013 by the FAA, first officers are required to hold an airline transport pilot certificate, requiring 1,500 hours total time as a pilot. The rule makes exemption for pilots with fewer than 1,500 hours or who have not reached the age of 23 to obtain a restricted privileges ATP certificate. There is already an exemption in place that allows military pilots to operate with restricted privileges at 750 hours, but this new proposal is recommending that this number be lowered further. The reason for this is the concern that there are not enough qualified pilots to fill the airline cockpits. A spokeswoman from the FAA told the Wall Street Journal that the agency is reviewing the committee's recommendations, but no other details are being released at this time. After the break, UAV pilots are applying in droves. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. It appears there are a lot of people who want to fly small UAVs for non-recreational purposes. The FAA announced that the number of applications for commercial UAV pilot certificates has climbed to some 12,000 since the FAA's new rules took effect August 29th, according to FAA Administrator Michael Huerta. According to a Bloomberg BNA report, Earl Lawrence, the director of the FAA Unmanned Aircraft Systems Integration Office, said that more than 4,000 people have passed the aeronautical knowledge test required to become a commercial drone pilot. According to the report, all of this has put pressure on the FAA to accelerate its efforts to create rules integrating UAVs into the national airspace. These rules and procedures were not included in the newly released Unmanned Aerial System regulations. It will take some coordination between the FAA and other state and local officials to come up with a plan that addresses the needs of the FAA as well as the communities where they will be operated. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar.
If you're looking to learn about what's going on in collegiate aviation, the 69th Annual Collegiate Aviation Conference and Expo is being held September 28th through the 30th at the Double Tree in downtown Omaha. It's hosted by the University of Nebraska, and there will be 70 plus colleges and universities, 200 plus attendees, and 40 aviation service and supply exhibitors. On September 30th and 31st, the Ranger Old School Fly-In and Air Show No. 10 commemorates 105 years of Ranger Airfield in Ranger, Texas. The event includes a short air show on Friday evening and Saturday afternoon, and you can enjoy a barbecue, antique biplane rides, a display of Model T Ford cars, and lots of other ground displays. The atmosphere is unique at this airfield, and this event is held each October to host visitors from far and wide. The Wings Out West Air Show in Prescott, Arizona will take place during the AOPA fly-in, Saturday, October 1st, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. There will be three exciting performers this year at the event being presented by the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. The list of performers includes Embry-Riddle alumni Melissa Adrajewski, Bill Stein, and Skip Stewart. There will also be numerous displays and forums, and you're invited to join in with the Prescott Oktoberfest celebration as well. For our Radical Motorsport fans, the Red Bull Air Race World Championship is touching down for its U.S. debut race at the legendary Indianapolis Motor Speedway on October 1st and 2nd. It's still anyone's championship and Matt Hall will be looking to ruin Matthew Doldier's party. At a new track in a brand new location, anything could happen. When it comes to exciting motorsport racing, Indy is the place to be. After these messages, is it possible a military plane that will cost less than expected? Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The cost estimate for the new B-21 Raider long-range bomber has been cut by some $39 million each, according to the Pentagon's Office of Cost Estimate and Program Analysis. This drops the cost for each airplane to about $551 million. It looks like airliners are finally catching up to the technology found in home-built experimental airplanes. Rockwell Collins has been selected to provide a touchscreen display for the new Boeing 777X airliner. This is the first touchscreen unit installed in an airliner. The Argentinian Air Force has ordered eight Technam P-2002 JF training aircraft for its Military Aviation Academy. The Argentinian Air Force initiated technical studies to incorporate a new simple trainer screener aircraft as the first flying step of its Military Aviation Academy. The National Business Aviation Association announced that Louis Sino will receive MBAA's Doswell Award. This award recognizes lifelong individual achievement and an exceptional record of volunteer service on behalf of and in support of the aims, goals, and objectives of business aviation. The International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers has announced its support of the proposed Alaska Airlines Virgin America merger. The IAM has sent a letter to the Department of Justice expressing their support of the merger that was announced in April of this year. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. In what may be the first real bidding war for a commercial space launch, United Launch Alliance has told the Pentagon that SpaceX may not be the best deal for U.S. taxpayers, despite the lower cost of the launch. Florida Today reports that the deadline for submitting bids for the contract has passed, and SpaceX did not confirm that it had submitted a bid. ULA did get a proposal in on time nearly a year after it chose not to bid on a GPS launch mission. In a statement, ULA said that recent launch failures have shown that, quote, rockets are not commodities. They are high-risk systems, and the consequences of failure are costly and far-reaching. While ULA did not specifically mention the two SpaceX launch failures, it seems apparent their statement was alluding to them. The contract will be awarded by the Air Force's Space and Missile Systems Center, but no date for the contract award has been given. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. 
If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.